we're encouraged to treat every Yom Tov as a reenactment. We're not celebrating and remembering events that are receding into the past, but they're moments in history that are to be repeated, savoured, and which mature with each observance as the years go past. A great thinker once likened the Jewish year to a spiral staircase. You come round to the same place, place, but each year you have a better view. That's quite easy to understand when it comes to Pesach and Sukkot. Pesach, we reenact the Exodus at the Seder. Sukkot, we sit in the hut. It's quite easy to do. But what do we do with Shavuos, the encounter with God at Mount Sinai? So, in normal times, we'd have the Torah readings. That's not going to be possible this year. Specific prayers and Torah study. For Professor Eliezer Berkowitz, the encounter with God which we're going to try to reenact on Shavuos is the greatest paradox of history. It's the creation of a meaningful relationship with God, one which doesn't really make sense. Berkowitz, in one of his essays on encounter, says as follows, the presence of the divine imperils men, not on account of God's will directed against man, but because divine nature is so charged with the vitality of being that its nearness naturally overwhelms all individual existence. It means being proximate to God obliterates our own existence. Thus we are faced with a paradox. The God of religion, we have observed, must be a living one. And a living God is one who stands in relationship to the world. That is a God who is not, o- not only is, but is also for man, as it were, who is concerned about man. We may know of the relationship only if it is real, if the divine concern is actually revealed to man. This is what we have called the encounter, which is the fundamental religious experience. Now we find that the encounter threatens the very existence of man. Without the encounter, there can be no religion, but the encounter itself, man cannot endure. There can be no religion without some active relationship between God and man. In the relationship, however, man cannot survive. And Berkowitz goes on to explore this paradox, which he understands to be resolved by God, who shows himself to man, reveals what he calls his unbearable presence, but somehow or other props us up so that we are able to experience revelation, a paradoxical moment in which we experience the divine, which by rights should obliterate our very existence. But most importantly, the encounter is transformational. It changes the kind of person we are, we can be, the way we think about ourselves. And that moment of Sinaitic encounter is replayed on Shavuos every year. Now, to better understand this concept of encounter, I'd like to return to a well-worn idea in what we understand to be the first commandment, but appears to be a preamble to the Ten Commandments in the 20th parak of Shemois. God introduces himself, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from the land of Egypt, from the house of slaves. There's a very obvious question here. Why does God choose to introduce himself as the God of the Exodus rather than the God of creation? David Chazoni, in his book, The Ten Commandments, puts the question this way. God is given one shot, as it were, to describe himself in the first commandment, and of all the possible self-introductions, he chose this one. Now, it's well known that the Ramban Nachmanides understands this introduction to say, you were beholden to me in Egypt, I brought you out of slavery, and therefore you owe me one. That justifies the laws that follow. But more famously, Rabbi Yehuda Halevi in the Kuzari takes a different approach. It's the familiar, the accessible, something which the world had got to hear about already. The known, not just to the Israelites, but known to the surrounding nations. God as the intervener in history, God who brings them out of Egypt. For Eliezer Berkowitz, the Kuzari is essential. It's about encounter rather than philosophy, as the Rambam would say. God, as it were, says, you've seen me once, now encounter me again in my full glory. Chazoni elaborates on a slightly different point, but very much in the theme of the Kuzari, that there is a centrality of redemption in the thinking around the Exodus and what it really means to us. Here's a small quote. That God is above all an exemplar of the redemptive spirit 
seems so overwhelmingly evident from the story of the Exodus that it seems almost as though this, rather than the creation of the universe, is its crowning achievement in the whole Bible. That is Chazoni's understanding, effectively an adaptation of the Kuzari. Yet in all this divine saga, man is anything but passive. And this is the point which I think is meaningful to us. What makes the Exodus story so crucial for understanding the first commandment is not so much God's interventions as those of so many individuals whose heroic efforts make the difference between success and failure. And he goes on to describe the role of Moshe, the role of Nachshon ben Aminadav, who's willing to jump into the sea, and many other great leaders, men and women. Then he says, and I'm very near the end of this quote, God may offer opportunities for miraculous salvation, but only when man plays his own role as redeemer through a courageous act of righteous initiative will he make the transition from slave to human being and fulfill the mandate of the, of the, of the first commandment. I like this very much, this idea of righteous initiative. What Hazoni is saying, interpreting the Kuzari, is that God invests his confidence in us as a people but also in human redemptive agency. The revelation is transformed, not in, from, a, from a passive act, to a shared experience of redemption, a partnership between man and God, what I would re-term a redemptive encounter. In Rabbi Sachs's introduction to his Shavuos Machsa, he draws attention to a phrase in the replay of the, of the Revelation narrative at the beginning of the book of Devorim. It describes a koil godoil velo yosof, a great voice velo yosof. Now, the word yosof is difficult. Rabbi Sachs calls it a brilliantly ambiguous phrase. It is what is actually known as a contronym. Because you depend on how you decide to read it, it can mean two, one of two opposite meanings. It can mean a great voice that did not continue, and it can mean a great voice that never ended, because the encounter with God was both one-off and something that recurs. Again, Rabbi Sachs, it happened once, but reverberated for all time. This is the replay of the encounter experience which we try to perform on Shavuos, and which characterizes the transformation to a transformational nature of the Sinaitic revelation in the encounter. Because we can and we must replay this redemptive encounter in which we renew our covenant and connection with God and that is done through the agency of the Torah. This year, in some ways, this is more challenging with the lack of a physical community, the lack of public Torah readings which reenact, as many say, the Sinaitic revelation. But in other ways, it might, the, the solitude, the thoughtfulness, the lack of the communal experience might be used to focus more on the core experience, Torah and its transformational, redemptive properties. These ideas are a little esoteric, but I think each of us sense each year with Shavuos a sense of a greater connection to the Torah. The idea that God performed the impossible, the impossible, as Berkowitz said, by making us able to withstand the divine presence, to get a glimpse of the divine. But each year, by exploring and understanding and delving and loving the Torah each um, more and more, an opportunity to replay or to understand that Kabbalah Satoya receiving the Torah once again, that it will be reju rejuvenating and also redemptive as we re-experience the redemptive encounter again this year. I wish you a good Yom Tov and Zeit, Gesund and Stark.